Welcome back to Sledgehammer Horror, guys. I am Ken Sledge. Let's talk horror. Uh, today, I am joined by the beautiful, talented, and award-winning actress, Sarah Nicklin. Sarah, how are you doing today? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing very well. Um, for those of you that don't know, Sarah has won Best Actress for her roles in the films Exhumed and Victimized. Congratulations on that. Thank you. Oh, anytime. That's awesome. So glad to have you here. Um, so how are you holding up now with quarantine? How's everything going for you? I know things are kind of crazy right now, but how are you holding up? Um, I'm doing okay so far. Things are definitely really different, but um, I'm kind of a, <laughs> a homebody anyway, so staying home a lot of the time isn't that difficult for me. So sure, it's, it's sure. kind of nice to, you know, take a break from always having to, I say this and it sounds like, oh, poor pity me, like, but there's always like uh, events going on and like, especially within the horror community and, you know, everyone, there's a birthday every week or there's someone's film premiere or there's, you know, something that you have to do like two or three times a week, which gets exhausting after a while, honestly. So it is kind of nice to just take a break and stay home and, you know, do things like that I never usually get to do, like painting or like, you right. know, <laughs> recreational <laughs> stuff. <laughs> Well, I'm glad you've had time to, you know, settle yourself mentally a little bit. Um, I, I know things are up in the air with COVID, so I don't know how much you can really tell me, but what do you got going on in the future? You got any future projects planned you can talk to us about? or? I do. Um, I have no idea when they're going to be filming. <laughs> sure. <laughs> That's the question. Um, I did actually just film um, two weeks ago. I worked on a film that was shooting in Vegas called The Retaliators, and it's a thriller it's being produced by um, the same production company that was behind the Motley Crue biopic, The Dirt, that came out last nice. year. So um, it's a record label that's now started to make music, uh, movies. So they're including a lot of the music from the artists that they manage in the video or in the movie, which is going to be really cool. So that was a really interesting process because this is the first time like I've been on set since COVID happened and mm -hmm. all the protocols are really different and all of the testing that had to be done to like make sure that everyone's safe and keeping distance and Crafty is all in like individual little like Ziploc bags now. <laughs> so that was, that was unusual. Um, that film was going to be coming out theatrically in October, but you know, who knows at this point if, what's going to happen with that. Um, but I do have two other projects that I'm working on. One I'm producing, it's called uh, Psycho A Go Go. It's a uh, 19 set in the 1960s, and it's a musical slasher horror film. So oh, that's, you, I'm hooked. You, you got me already. It's super fun. It's super fun. Um, so we were all ready to go, you know, before this shutdown happened. And then, you know, everyone was quarantined, had to shut down. And so now, and now there's all this new safety uh, protocols and everything. So we're not really, since we, you know, it's a, it's a low budget film and our entire budget was already like very carefully allocated to what we were going to be doing and putting it all on camera. And so now this all these additional rules and the cost of all the testing and everything is something that, you know, we're finding very difficult <laughs> to get that, that. That's something that not a lot of people think about with this is there is a lot more expense now. Yeah, you know, absolutely. With everything going on. Yeah. So. Um, about I read in uh, LA Times or something like that that they're expecting like film productions to increase by the cost by about 20% just because of all the, the new stuff that they have to do in order to make sure it's safe for everyone. So, yeah. And I'm sorry that affects you guys. I mean, people hear like you guys are getting affected. They're like, oh, poor people in Hollywood. But I mean, what they don't see, yeah, you guys are in movies. You guys are doing music, what have you. But you're still people. You still have lives. You still have bills. You still got to take care of yourself. Yeah. And on top of that, you got to entertain us as well. So, you know, <laughs> I'm pulling for you guys. I hope everything works out for you. It's one of those Thank things you. that I've been very open about. If it wasn't for the music and movies I grew up with, I 100% would not be the person I am today. So I appreciate yeah. all the hard work you guys do. I am very honored that you guys have your own opinions on things. And I hope <laughs> that this gets out of the way soon so you guys can get back to normal as well. 
I hope so. Yeah, absolutely. I do too. And you know, it's tough for a lot of people and like a lot of my friends and stuff that, you know, you work gig to gig. And so the fact that, you know, there are no gigs right now, you know, some people are just like totally out of work and just have no income stream. And it's like, it's, it's really scary. For well, yeah, not, not everybody makes the money that Dwayne Johnson makes. <laughs> Very few people make that kind of money. <laughs> <laughs> so I definitely understand. Um, but I do want to get into your first horror movie. You've been in yeah. plenty of horror movies. I would like to know where this started for you. So what was your first horror movie? The first horror movie I ever saw, it was a double feature um, of The Exorcist and Halloween. And it was what a, a, yeah. what a double feature. It was at my friend's birthday party, like birthday party sleepover when we were like, I don't know, eight, nine, 10 years old, like something like that. And, you know, these are films that I was never allowed to watch myself sure. growing up, like no way. But she had an older brother. And so her older brother went and like rented this stuff for her for her birthday. So, you know, there's a whole bunch of kids, you know, sleeping yeah. in the living room and their sleeping bags. <laughs> watching What a badass movies. older brother, man. Yes. Seriously. <laughs> That's awesome. He's super cool. <laughs> so since we're doing a double feature here, the questions will be a little bit different. Um, okay. The first question I have for you, um, so we already asked, you know, how old you were, who were you with? Now I want to ask, of these two films, The Exorcist and Halloween, which one affected you the most and why? I think The Exorcist affected me the most, um, mostly because I was roughly the age of, you know, the girl of Reagan in the, in the film. Um, and also what impacted me and what really stuck with me about that film was the, the cross scene. Yeah. <laughs> Because, like, when you're the, that age, like, as a girl, like, you're just starting to, like, understand your body and, like, mm -hmm. where things are and what they do. And so, like, the fact that she was, like, doing that in a movie for something that is, was, like, taboo to even talk about that you had was just, right. like, mind-blowing. It was just, right. like, oh, my God. <laughs> especially for someone her age. I mean, the, the thing is, like, you watch that film now, and that still shocks you. You know, like that's not a thing that's just like oh back then it was so crazy but not no it's still when you're watching now you're like oh like i watch horror movies with my kids i got a 12 year old and an eight-year-old daughter my 12 year old son he's all about it i still won't let him watch the exorcist because of that scene because especially right now he's right at that age where that's starting to become a little more prevalent um, <laughs> yes my daughter i couldn't get her to watch anything stronger than gremlins that's about the line for her gremlins is it you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was really, it was really shocking and like really, really stuck with me. And I, I mean, like, I just, I, yeah, I was like, just in awe. <laughs> oh, that's a good, like, good way to I get it. <laughs> Let me ask you a question about Halloween now. Let's bounce a little bit. Sure. When you think of Halloween, what's the first thing that pops into your head? Um, well, Michael Myers, of course, but other than that, um, I think of kind of just like the eerie, moody suspense of that film, because it's really not, um, it's really not a gore fest. It's really not, you know, it's a pretty slowly paced film, but it's done so masterfully that the suspense is really what, why you love that film and what pulls you in and what makes it, you know, such a, a piece of art that we still remember and revere to this day. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And we, something I've talked about numerous times on this uh, podcast is the three to me movies that have the best score of all time are Star Wars. You know, everybody knows the Imperial March, even if you haven't mm -hmm. seen Star Wars. Jaws, everybody knows. Yep. The da -da -da. And then Halloween, you know, John Carpenter's yep. score in Halloween, not just the main piano theme, but the whole score throughout the whole movie is phenomenal at setting the mood. Um, John Carpenter, I mean, even with the thing, with Halloween, John Carpenter always knew how to set the mood with the music to you, to heighten your anxiety and your fear. Absolutely. So, as an eight, I've never been an eight or nine year old girl, but I can only imagine <laughs> that at that age, watching these two films back to back. And you said you weren't really into horror. This is the first horror films you'd ever seen. So yeah. to start off with these is like. It was a lot. <laughs> going from a bottle to a steak. <laughs> it's like, yes. that's, that's a big jump there yeah it was huge like i because i didn't even know like these types of films existed i think mm -hmm. i mean i grew up on like talking animal movies and you know sure. <laughs> and so and i think we had i saw like i remember seeing like one flash of um 
the thing where the 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 tentacles start coming out of the dog like in the beginning yeah. of the movie like it was just on tv at one point and i was like oh my god the dog's turning inside out and like my parents immediately shut it off <laughs> so that was like <laughs> you see nothing and no it'd be like this is not for you <laughs> well you know, only imagine, you know going from an american tale to the exorcist you know that's the, the land before time going yeah. from petri to michael myers <laughs> That's, that's quite the difference there. So I, I can only imagine what the parents, if they would have only known what you girls were doing down there, you know? Yeah, exactly. Thank God they didn't, didn't come down and like check on, <laughs> check on what was going on. Right. It was so funny. of these two, The Exorcist yeah. and Halloween, which one do you think you've watched more throughout your lifetime? Um, I have watched Halloween more throughout my lifetime, but that also has a lot to do with my fiance because that's his favorite film of like all time. And um, he has worked with uh, HalloweenMovies.com, which is the the website that's owned by Trankus, who owns Halloween. So um, he watches Halloween every year. He watches all the Halloween films in every year in order. So like as a countdown. So I have seen Halloween a whole bunch of times, um, not right. necessarily of my own volition. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool, man. Congratulations to him. That's really cool. Something that he loves the film and then he gets to work and be around that film. I love yes. about hearing people's dreams come true and being able to do stuff like that. And every year on Halloween, we watch Halloween 3 because that's, my favorite of all of them, the season of the witch. Yeah, I know there's yeah. no Michael Myers, but I am no, a it's a great film. That. Yeah, I'm a strong believer. If that was just season of the witch, not Halloween three season of the witch, mm -hmm. it would have had sequels. It would have been a cult classic. I think it's a fantastic movie. I love that movie so much. Um, well, you guys are talking about your, you know, your uh, fiance is a big Halloween fan. Let yeah. me ask you this: What were your guys' opinion on the remake, Halloween 2018? The first time I saw it, I absolutely loved it. And I thought it was like, I thought it was great because it, it, it brought back so much, so many of those memories and like all the, you know, the, the references to all the films that came behind it or uh -huh. came before. And like, it just, it had that nostalgia. The second time I watched it, I didn't like it as much because now I felt like I was paying more attention to the story. And in some places I feel like it kind of dragged a little or didn't totally make sense. Um, sure. So to me, it's kind of a mixed bag. I feel like it's definitely, it did a lot to, a lot of fan service. And that's like, what, so when you first watch it, you're like, oh my God, yes. And you yeah. know, it's another Halloween film and there hasn't been one in a super long time. Um, but so, yeah, I, I'm kind of in the middle about it. I was not a fan of uh, Dr. Sartain. <laughs> See, and <laughs> I hear that, that a lot. I, I liked the twist. I liked his twist. What did I did not like, and thank God my wife is smarter than me, and she made me sit down. When Dr. Sartain went down, and he put on the mic mask, and he stood up, I was like, oh, fuck this. I'm up. This is stupid. And I wanted to leave. Yeah. And my wife That's was what like, I no, too. come on. Yeah, like that, like that scene right there, I think, is the worst scene. I don't mind his twist, how he's trying to get Michael to be, you know, open up to him, whatever, blah, 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 blah. That's fine with me. But when he put on that mask, I was so pissed. Like, I was mad. Like, what the fuck is this? This is stupid. <laughs> like, exactly. Like, I, I, I did like the movie. And I like how they retconned a lot of the stuff that happened. Like, now they're not brother and sister anymore again. Um, you know, a lot of, even though I loved Halloween H2O, they mm -hmm. got rid of that whole story. So I do like a lot of what they did with it. Um, Exorcist, let's go it's kind of the same route with that. Were there any of the sequels of The Exorcist? And I mean, just straight sequels, not exorcism movies, but straight right. Exorcist sequels that you were a fan of? I don't think I've actually seen any of the sequels, if I'm being honest. Um, I watched the Exorcist TV show that came out, what was like last year or something like that? Yeah, on Fox. Um, and I thought, I thought that was pretty well done. I thought that was like, I, I enjoyed a lot of it. I thought the twist of her, well, spoiler if anyone hasn't seen it, but <laughs> the twist of her being um, uh, Reagan was, I wasn't sure how I felt about that. I was right. like, okay, that's an interesting way to do it, but, but I Did don't know. Did you have, yeah. <laughs> so I was like, I'm not sure. But as far as the films, I, ha I, didn't, I haven't seen any of the sequels. If you get a chance and you and your fiance are looking for a movie for a movie night, watch The Exorcist 3. Um, okay. I, in my personal opinion, I think Exorcist 3 is one of the best ones in the whole series. Um, a lot of the stuff that happens in the hospital is super scary to me. There's a lot of good jump scares in it. There's a decent story to go along with it. So if I could throw that recommendation out there, I would recommend you guys watch Exorcist 3. 
Awesome. I'm, I'm sensing a theme here between Exorcist and Halloween, number one and number three. So we just skip over number two. Yep, just skip two on all of them. <laughs> um, so Halloween, because there's not really much death in The Exorcist, so I can't talk about death, but Halloween there is. What, and I yeah. hate saying favorite kill, but I guess what kill stuck with you the most from Halloween? Oh, that's tough. Um, I feel like the first time I saw it, it was... Um, I'm blanking on her name when um, she's found in the bed with the Judith Myers headstone in the bed with yeah. her. Um, what's her name? Totally that chick. <laughs> Forgetting yeah. her character name. Uh, but that I think that was the one that really stuck with me the, the most, at least when I first saw it, because that that of her with the headstone in the bed was just such a terrifying image. And then I also feel like um, when uh, Bob comes, I think it's Bob that comes swinging out when he's in the, um, has the sheet the, over him and comes the swinging sheet, yeah, out. Yeah, the ghost. Yeah, yes. <laughs> and so that that was also really um, impactful for me as well. More more of like a, you know, jump scare of him, you know, swinging in the doorway. But that was the thing about that film that I, like, I was like, oh my God, it was so terrifying. It was like, he always knows where you're going to go. And he's putting your dead body, dead friends, like in your path. So like as a kid, like that was horrible horrifying how mm -hmm. does he know <laughs> yeah and it's crazy that i mean you, you don't obviously as a kid especially and at the time you didn't know but you were watching two of the most iconic horror films of all time and you lumped yeah. them together into one night so to me that is just so i'm jealous of the <laughs> night that you got to have because another thing i've talked about a lot i don't condone using drugs i don't personally um but I look at my first horror movie as like the first time you do drugs. And after that, you're always watching horror movies, chasing that dragon, looking for those scares again from that first thrill that you got. And yeah. it's something that that's why I wanted to do this podcast. You know, my first horror movie, because it's something that I think with all of us, we all remember what our first horror movie was because it impacted us so much. And people in the horror community, as you were saying at the beginning, it's definitely more like a family. Um, for sure. I've absolutely. Met, yeah, doing this, I've met so many cool people that are just so open to talk about horror and, you know, stay in contact and be cool people. And it's just like, the minute you start talking about horror movies, people are just like, I'm in, you know, and you're talking about cons and you don't have rom-com con. You don't, you know, like exactly. horror is, it's its own thing. It's its own entity. And it's so embodied in kindness and love. And it's such a great thing. I've, I've recommended cons to everybody that hasn't been to one you need to go because you yeah. got these people that are dressed up in the scariest scariest outfits but are still so willing to stop and talk with you and pose for pictures and meeting all the people that are in the movies like you guys it's this is an honor for me you know like when i get you guys to agree to come do this like it's such a pleasure to be able to talk to you guys and dissect your brain and see where this all started for you and you know you're up there doing it now and maybe a couple years from now, I'll talk to somebody that had watched one of your movies as their first horror movie. You know, like that's, it's. That'd be crazy. I know, but you guys don't understand. I think, I think you do understand, but I think it gets overstated sometimes how important you are to us because you keep us entertained. And especially right now, we get to escape from the horrors of real life into a mm. horror movie and be less scared <laughs> while we're watching movies than we are in real <laughs> right. life. So yeah, it's, so it's not something happening to you. <laughs> Right. I mean, it's great. And that's, a, that's the amazing thing about horror and about the horror community is that it really is a community and there's so much, there's so much love and there's so much loyalty too. like, I mean, like you said, there's no rom-com cons, rom-com cons. <laughs> I've had to practice that so many times. <laughs> Because <laughs> there's really like there's no people don't love those films and have such a reaction to those films as they do horror films. And I feel like I mean, historically, horror has also been a way for us to really push the boundaries of society and examine ourselves as humans in ways that a lot of other genres don't really do. And they've, they've been the first in a, in a lot of times to, you know, put let's say a black a black man and a white woman together on screen or to you know do those taboos or things that were taboo at the time because it's shocking but right. it's supposed to be shocking because it's a horror film so it allows horror to take those steps that other mainstream films might not brilliantly put that's <laughs> perfect no and, and that's you're you're so right because even with horror movies and you know thriller suspense movies they do push that boundary a lot i mean look at us i mean the social commentary yeah. in that movie 
is brilliant, you know? And again, I wasn't a huge fan of the movie. I think it was just because it got blown up too much. And by the time I seen it, all my friends had talked it up so much that it would have been impossible for it to live up to it no matter what. But, yeah. you know, the, the social commentary in that movie is so powerful. It's so strong. And I love that horror is able to push that and make us talk about it. And like you said, Night of the Living Dead, the black and white one, such yeah. a fantastic movie. And it's amazing that we can go back and talk about these things and how they started to break down barriers. And hopefully exactly. we can continue to do that with you guys doing this stuff now. So yeah, it's amazing I hope so. to hear that. <laughs> you know, keep, keep paving the way towards, you know, yeah. equality and just make, letting it all hang out on screen. Cause that's a lot of horror. <laughs> Guts and everything. Just let it all hang out. Exactly. All of it. <laughs> so now I got to ask you the hard question. Oh boy. Okay. Keep one, lose one. Halloween, Exorcist. Oh boy. Like, lose one, like, from the history of the world? Or, oh man. Yeah. That's not fair. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I have a star around this question because I knew that you'd be like, you dick. <laughs> yeah. That's so hard. Um, okay, I guess. I'm going to say keep Halloween and lose The Exorcist. And that is because I feel like Halloween was so much more impactful and spawned, almost spawned the entire, you know, slasher genre. I mean, there was, you know, Black Christmas and stuff before that. But, like, it, it's what made the slasher genre really popular and it it's what kicked off the entire franchise it's what created the reason for the friday the 13th franchise which then you know spawned nightmare on elm street and chucky and like all, all this other stuff so for that reason because there's so much else that would not have happened without that movie right then i will say keep halloween <laughs> See, and i agree with you i mean I, you know black christmas and all that um i get you know that they were a slasher in their time I think the original slasher to me is Psycho, um, just because mm -hmm. it was with Norman Bates, and they actually continue to franchise around that. But I think True, Michael yeah. Myers is the one that really, like you said, he really set in stone what a slasher can be. And the influence yeah. of Michael Myers, like you talk about Friday the 13th, Nightmare on Elm Street, James Cameron has came out and said that when he wrote Terminator, he was trying to write a sci-fi Michael Myers. Like, that's what the Terminator was. It was a slasher film to him. And... I mean, the, the impact of Michael Myers is global. It's huge. Yeah, Everybody it's huge. knows who Michael Myers is. And if you've never seen the movie, you know the piano. Like, the ba -da -da -ba -da -da -ba -da. you know, that's how big mm -hmm. this franchise is. So I think, you know, you have chosen the right. <laughs> you have, you <laughs> I have chosen wisely. Right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so at the end of these, I always ask the same question. Now it's going to be a double whammy. Um, oh, boy. Okay. We rate the movies on a skull rating of zero to five skulls. What would you rate The Exorcist on a scale of zero to five skulls? Zero being the worst, five being the best. Just as far as like my love for the film, or are we looking at like a specific part of it? Just like my no, I'm just looking for for your okay. overall general love of the film. Um, I mean, I honestly would put. I'm gonna put both of them at like a five. So <laughs> I, I really think that a big part of that is. We're going to make our first my, – mine was House. I talk about House all the mm. time. I absolutely adore that movie. Um, to me, that's a five. And I think it's just because no matter how goofy or bad the movie may be – I mean, obviously, with Exorcist and Halloween, they're not bad or goofy movies. But we're always going to hold them to that higher regard because yeah. of what they started for us. Um, and, like, you go back – like, I watch The Exorcist now. I own it, obviously. You, you watch it now compared to when you were a kid and people are like, Oh, well, it's not that scary anymore. And I think the thing is when we're kids, our imagination makes it so much crazier than it actually yeah. is. We sit back down and watch it as an adult. And you're like, I remember this being a little more, you know, this scene being a little mm -hmm. more graphic or scary than it is, but the imagination of a child, you don't know what's going on. So you're doubling how crazy and scary the scenes actually are. Absolutely. And I think that's, I mean, somewhat true for both of them as well, because, you know, Halloween has very, very little blood in it, but like you, yeah. your memory of it and w the blanks that you fill in and what is happening off screen that you're not actually seeing is just like so much worse than what they're actually putting on screen. And the interesting thing that I think about uh, The Exorcist is like, as you get older, you identify with different characters in that film. Yes. So like when I was little, I identified with uh, Reagan because, you know, that was the girl. Now, if I go watch that, I'm identifying with the mother 
you know, and then 20 years from now, I'm probably going to identify with the priest. So right. like, there's different, like, it, that's a movie that grows with you as you age more so yes. I think than Halloween does, which I think is interesting. Right. But you're right though. And that's one of the things that even, you know, uh, we, um, my wife's first horror movie was Pet Cemetery, and, you know, watching that movie now, I couldn't even watch the scene where Gage gets hit by the car because oh, I've yeah. got kids and I live on a busy road. And you know, that as a parent, like that destroy, I mean, as a kid, it was sad too, but when you become a parent, these scenes destroy you. you know, Absolutely. I couldn't imagine walking in on my daughter flailing on her bed, you know, like that. Yeah. All like cut up and like, like you can grow. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. That's a whole, it's a whole different thing. <laughs> So I, I do have another question. Um, do you by any chance have Shudder? I do, yeah. Do, have you watched the Cursed Films series on that yet? Yes, I have. Yep. That, that was the Exorcist one where they were talking about her getting hurt. On, I mean, that's such yeah, a crazy. Yeah, on the rig. Oh, my God. Yes. So, like, and I love being able to watch behind-the-scenes documentary stuff like that and learn more things about the movies. And I actually just filmed an episode a little bit ago where Poltergeist was what we were talking mm. about. And... Same thing, you know, you have that, you know, this, I don't want to like that. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like the aura surrounding the movie of the stuff that happened behind the scenes as well. I mean, yeah. you talk, there's no bigger movie than that than the exorcist. I mean, there were people that were so terrified. They left the theater crying and puking. And I couldn't imagine a movie doing that to us today. Yeah. You know, I mean, we've become so uh, desensitized to all this stuff, uh, you know, at this point, but you know, back then when the movie was created, which wasn't even that long ago, if you think about it, and, you right. know, <laughs> like there, there are people still alive, you know, that, <laughs> out that saw it in the theater. So, but that just shows how much has changed in this very short amount of time. Cause I was just, you didn't do that back then. Like right. that was something you didn't talk about. You didn't show that on screen. And so it's going to have that, giant reaction of people you know throwing up and leaving the theater thinking the film is like actually legitimately cursed or you know yeah. I mean, and the, the the exorcist too we talked about how big halloween is but i mean the exorcist i mean i always think of beetlejuice when he's like i've seen the exorcist x amount of times and it gets funnier every time i see it you know like <laughs> that that to me you know when that came out people were like that gets funnier what's wrong with this guy yeah, yeah, exactly. There's so. no comedy in there. <laughs> <laughs> well, again, I do want to thank you. Don't go anywhere. I got a couple more questions for you. Okay. Everybody else, thank you so much for tuning in. We appreciate it very much. As soon as I get any updates from Sarah about any of her future projects, check her Instagram. I have it down in the description. Check mine. I will keep you guys updated. Stay what you are, guys. Keep talking horror, and we'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>